Hi, it's Rob McKillop here and we're going to look at um, improvisation, 19th century style. Um, the simplest style of improvisation uh, that I've been through is uh, the blues, if I'm improvising a 12 bar blues for instance, in the key of E, there would be uh, three basic chords, E7, A7 and B7. And I would do uh, slot in uh, E things when I'm on the E chord. Uh, goes to the A chord, I would do A things, uh, different from what I did on the E chord, and so on the B chord uh, it has B things that I would do. <laughs> so it's modular, this is a modular system where each uh, chord has a number of licks um, that fit with that chord. Now it's the same in the classical world, or it would be nice, wouldn't it, if we had a standard sequence of chords that we could uh, do stuff with uh, when we start improvising. Well, there is such a, a thing, and it was a publication by a man called Felix Horet Horetsky, that was his name, Horetsky, uh, who actually taught in Edinburgh, where I'm uh, broadcasting from right now. And uh, this is his um, Preludes, Cadences and Modulations uh, in every key for the guitar. And uh, if we uh, have a look at page five, it looks like this. Um, uh, lots of uh, <laughs> whole note chord sequences. And uh, the first one there, if you could uh, have a look at that. You can download this from my website. There's the address on the screen. Uh, it's, for, it's free. Uh, the first one has a, a C major chord, uh, followed by an E7. A minor, so that E7 is a dominant uh, seventh of A minor. And then we have a D minor with an F in the bass. Uh, very often uh, in the key of C that D minor chord will have the F in the bass. Uh, and then what's called a 6-4 chord is a C chord with a G in the bass, uh, followed by a G7 uh, going to C, that's a 5-1 cadence at the end. Uh, it's good to analyse each of these little cadences. Some of them are quite long, you know, they, they go on for quite a while. Um, but this you would keep in your head, uh, or even have it written down in front of you and improvise over it. Um, so if I let you hear that, just the basic chords, uh, C, A minor, oh, sorry, C, E7, A minor, then that D minor with the F in the bass, Giuliani style with the thumb, nothing wrong with it. Um, then a C chord with a G in the bass, followed by G7, and C again. And if you get an eight, eight string guitar, you can get a nice low C at the end. <laughs> um, so, there we have a harmonic sequence that we can play with. Uh, the next stage, harking back to the blues, is, is knowing uh, a number of licks that would appear that we could use on each chord. Um, so when we see a C chord, we have a, you know, 20, 50 things in our head that we can just pull out automatically. Um, the problem with the modular system is making it uh, sound flowing throughout the whole piece. Um, but if we look at some of the preludes uh, uh, by Aguado and Giuliani, uh, they're very modular and they, they don't have uh, a, a similar uh, motif or idea going through the whole uh, sequence. They'll do arpeggios, scales, uh, other things. So you can mix it up a bit, but sometimes you want to have it uh, flowing all the way through. Anyway, let's look at uh, just C major, the first chord. I'm not going to do the whole sequence, but I just want to look at the kind of things uh, one could do over any chord. So we got C, uh, we could do an arpeggio. Well, that wasn't hard. Uh, a different arpeggio. We can even add a G on the top. That low C is beautiful. Um, 
that's an arpeggio, we could do a scale and mix it with arpeggios. So you get and that's a perfectly good thing to do on a C chord. Uh, just know your C scale in that position. G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Okay. Um, so we can mix arpeggios and scales together, but we can do other things too. Uh, surround notes uh, for each note of the scale. Now it was a surround figure. There's a C, which is obviously in the C chord. And we take the tone above, it's D, C, B, C. We can slur that. So we can do a little figure around each note. Now take the, the first string, E, uh, open string, and we'll do a similar thing, E to F. It's nice to use an E flat here. Surround notes, one around the C, one around the E, but that third string, the G, we can also do a surround figure. G, A, G, F sharp. Now F sharp's not in the key of C, same as the uh, D sharp wasn't, uh, but it works on a surround uh, figure. So. Lots of things starting to happen. We've got arpeggio scales and little uh, surround figures or licks, if you want, um, that uh, decorate that C chord. Uh, we can use different positions of the C chord uh, all the way up the neck and uh, higher. <laughs> uh, so, and with each position, we've got different licks that we can throw in, and then. Uh, the next chord was E7th in the sequence. Well, you only have to spend five minutes looking at Giuliani uh, and you'll, you'll find a thousand ways of dealing with an E7th chord. Um, so one of the simplest things is just doing arpeggio. is next. Um, it, it, you know, that it's what we call 2B. <laughs> uh, chord 2 in the key of C is D minor, but it's first inversion, 2B, um, and then a 5 and a 1, but the 5, uh, normally G7, is preceded by a 6-4 chord, and you'll find this a lot in the classical period. It's C major with a G in the bass. And uh, a great thing to do over that is have the third string, the G, uh, as a pedal. Okay, so to sum up, um, Horetsky gives us a number of chord sequences that we can use for improvising on. Um, it's up to us to fill those boxes in with stuff, you know, so C stuff, E7 stuff and so on, uh, and try and make some uh, cohesive statement with all that. Uh, that's the objective, and um, you can use these as preludes to a piece. Um, you know, all, most of the, the main composers talked about uh, preludes or thing, pieces you can make up or play before you commence a piece. So even if you're doing a, a simple study by Saur or something, or Giuliani, you can uh, make up a little prelude. Now it could be as simple as... And then you're into the piece. You know, just outlining the key, tonic and dominant. Or you can do something more extended. Um, it could go on for 10 seconds, it could go on for 10 minutes. That's up to you. If you know how inspired you are and how much uh, uh, you've worked on this kind of stuff. 
but even with uh, just one or two cores, you can make up the Prelude. It doesn't have to be uh, real virtuoso of stuff. And that's it. That's all I want to say. There will be a lot more uh, videos in the future looking at individual chords and what we can do and uh, different chord progressions, uh, including the wonderful uh, augmented six chords. Um, and then we should also at some point look at stylistic differences of different composers uh, because they didn't always use the same chord sequences. Some prefer different uh, movements to others. So if you're playing a piece by Mertz, for instance, uh, you might want to use some of his harmonic language in your prelude. Anyway, this is uh, Rob McKillop signing off. <laughs> uh, come back soon. Uh, I hope you get something out of that. Get to work.